So we're back to where we started. We just imported the, the character. I just wanted to show you um, what the UVs that we generated are and why we do it we do it this way. And one of the things that we need to look out for when we create the material, that it's not going to be uh, based on the UV. That's uh, a very important thing. Always uh, is going to be based on the tri-planner. Uh, and that would make it a, a, you know usable for not just this model, but anything else that we do in the future or any other project. Yeah, remember, the, the context of this work, uh, workflow or the workshop that we're doing is to create a concept art. So the textures that we're generating are essentially the same thing that um, I would generate for uh, polypaint, right? Or even like to paint over after. Um, I'm not thinking like in my head, I'm not thinking, okay, this is going to be for a game engine. So I need to make sure I have a really nicely UV layout. Um, I need to open optimize everything so that it fits within one single texture set. I'm going to avoid UDIMs unless this is going to uh, be effects or whatever. So I'm not restricted in that sense. And maybe that's what uh, you feel that it goes against everything that you might learn um, for this process. But the idea is that I'm not using Substance 3D Painter as, a, as an amazing tool so that I can create a game asset. I'm using it because it has the amazing tools to to texture something of higher quality, hyper-realistic, uh, lots of details. But at the end, I'm going to end up with a nice visual, like a nice concept. So the what's behind it, what's behind that uh, amazing concept, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> like Unless for whatever reason, people say, oh, show me your UVs. Well, I, I can show you the UVs, but it doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't change the fact that the final image looks good, <laughs> you know? So that is, that is the idea with this, with this workflow. Obviously there are more proper ways of generating a nice UV layout, uh, you know, in the, in the extra mile course, like I said, I cover that just to, you know, be able to create like the, the grenades and, um, things that I have in my character. I'm, I mean, I detailed it in ZBrush, but those are things that, if the layout is not correctly, the details that I add as a UV projection in Painter are going to be on an angle or it's not going to be straight. Um, so this is definitely, there's definitely a proper way of doing things. Um, but like I said, in the context of this workflow, of this workshop, the workflow is for a concept art. So we're just going to think, make things that work and then don't worry about behind the scenes. If, if you want to learn all the stuff after by all means, um, but this is the simplest. So number one thing that I like to do after I bring in my character is to change the camera. For some reason, the camera in Painter is a little bit too distorted for, to my, uh, but this is like a personal taste. So I click on the display settings here, click on the camera, and, and I'm gonna push this down a bit so that it's kind of like a flatter perspective. Uh, you can play around with this. I think this is, for me at least, it works uh, better. Uh, so I can see things a bit better. I also sometimes work with my mouse, my 3D mouse, but for some reason I have to update the drivers. This is my 3D mouse, but it's not working smoothly uh, for some reason. Uh, okay, so we have the character. Um, I changed it, this thing. Let's go ahead and bring back those details from ZBrush. And I'm going to do that with the bake mesh map. So within the texture set settings, I want to click bake mesh maps. Uh, it's going to bring in this display, uh, this different window. And this is where I'm going to reference that. Uh, high res mesh. So at no point I'm going to load that high res mesh into Painter because that's going to make it explode. All I'm going to do is reference it. So I'm going to click on this icon right here in this area. So this is the default sort of settings on the mesh map settings. Click on this icon and that should give me the browser. And that's it. Let's get closer here. All right. So um, right now, what it's doing is referencing that high-res mesh, and it just loaded. So you you know that it's loaded now because it gives you this sort of blue thing. Uh, that blue thing is basically the low-res mesh and then a cage, uh, which is the distance that this software, the 3 Painter, is going to use to, to look for details in the high-res mesh and then project them back. So what we need to do is adjust this cage so that it's closer to the model. And that is done with this max frontal distance. So you click on this one, you can push it back or you can push it like that. This is going to make really weird artifacts. So we're going to push it closer to the mesh. But if we go too close, you see all those red bits. So those red bits are things that are in the high-res mesh. So those are details in the high-res mesh that won't be captured in the baking process. So we need to make sure that it is close to the object, but not so close that we see red bits. So something like that. Let's do a quick check. This looks pretty good to me. Okay. 
So that's it. We just need to adjust this slider, load the, sorry, load the high res mesh as a reference. Then you load the, uh, sorry, you change the max frontal distance and that would give you uh, the result that you want. Okay. So now the important thing, and this is the, um, like the cornerstone of this workflow, we need to make sure that we reference those names that we said in, uh, in ZBrush. So here at the bottom where it says match, we're going to change this from always to by mesh. And that basically tells Painter, look at by mesh, like look at every mesh that we have and look at the names. So that's why we have this low and underscore high. And this is another thing, another reason why I mentioned you can name it whatever. So you can, if you name it chicken head, you can type underscore chicken head and it's going to find the same name. So just make, make sure that whatever you name as this underscore suffix in zero low and high, it's just, you know, is a pretty common workflow anyway. That's it. I'm not going to touch anything else. I'm not going to get into all the technicalities of this. The default settings are absolutely fine. Um, just, you know, one more thing in case you want to, um, you know, increase the, the amount of details, you can go for 8K maps, but I'm going for 4K, 4096 by 4096. That's going to be the output of my map. Um, again, you can go for more than that. I don't think it's necessary. Um, again, you can also um, change that later, but for now, I'm going to bake all of those mesh maps into this resolution. That's it. I'm going to click on bake selected maps and it's going to start, you know, going through the model. You can rotate and move things around as this process is happening, which is pretty cool. Uh, and that basically generates all the maps that we need. Now, um, at this point, what we're doing is we're creating what I, what I call the mesh maps, right? So those mesh maps are different from the texture maps that we're going to be creating because the mesh maps, all they do is um, give information to the software, to the 3D painter uh, about the position of the model, about the, the thicker areas of the model, um, about the details that we have from the high res mesh, um, the ambient occlusion, um, you know, the curvature, all of those things that are, are just like good maps, good mesh maps to inform the software so that we can apply really cool um, effects and a bunch of really cool things in there. That's it. So it just takes a, a couple of minutes. It goes ahead and it produces all the maps for all the pieces, all the meshes. Now, now I'm going to click on return to paint mode and we should have uh, all the nice details from ZBrush. Very, very cool stuff. I'm just going to do a quick check, make sure everything is nicely. Yeah. So you see around the eyes, there's no weird stuff happening. Yeah, pretty cool. 